What we do in this paper is to investigate the fiscal net contribution of immigrants. Uh, we focus on immigrants who came after 2000, and we consider the period between 2000 and 2011. Uh, so the main body of the paper is concerned with trying to understand uh, whether um, they have paid more or less in terms of taxes than what they received in terms of benefits. And uh, what we find is that all immigrant groups who came to the UK since 2000 have made positive fiscal contributions uh, to the country over a period in which the country was running overall a budget deficit, so where the average native was making a negative uh, fiscal contribution. And uh, this is uh, true for all uh, groups of origin. So we distinguish between different groups of immigrants, uh, immigrants coming from non-EEA countries, immigrants coming from EEA 15 countries, these are the old European countries such as Germany and uh, France, Italy, and immigrants coming from the new accession countries, uh, Poland, Hungary, uh, Bulgaria, uh, the Czech Republic and others. Uh, now for all three groups we find that over the period between 2000 and 2011, for those who arrived after 2000, the net fiscal contribution is clearly positive. That means they paid more in terms of taxes than what they received in terms of transfers uh, and benefits. By transfers, we need uh, we, we mean uh, welfare uh, welfare provisions, tax credits, and we specifically look at that. But we additionally, when we do, do when we do our overall fiscal analysis, we do not only look at direct transfers, but we also look at the services that individuals receive and that are paid for by the state, for instance, road maintenance, uh, fire services, street lightning, and so on. Okay, so we, we do account for all of these uh, public expenditures in our analysis. And what is important to stress is that some of these expenditures are fixed regardless of the size of the population. Take the army, for instance, the UK needs an army that is of the same size regardless of the number of immigrants that uh, are in the country at any point in time. So that's an expenditure that the UK government would uh, have to bear in any case. And the fact that uh, you have more people in the country means that you can spread that cost over a, large, over a larger uh, pool of people, which in some sense means that uh, immigrants are allowing savings on uh, some fixed public expenditures to UK residents. Well, an interesting aspect of uh, um, looking at uh, what immigrants actually contribute uh, is uh, what education do they bring with them and where do we find them in the labor market. So usually immigrants come educated. Somebody must have paid for that education. And what we do in this paper uh, is to assess, um, well, the contribution immigrants make to the UK, UK economy by endowing the UK economy with skills and uh, education which has been paid for uh, by their country of origins. So for those immigrants who come between 2000 and 2011, uh, we find that over that 11-year pe period, uh, they endowed the UK labor market with education, which would have costed the UK taxpayer if it was generated in the UK uh, in the magnitude uh, between six and seven billion pounds. Especially recent immigrants, and particularly those from the um, new accession countries, as a very high employment rate, so they have very high uh, participation in the labor market and uh, compared to both UK natives and to other immigrant groups. So that is an indication that they come here primarily for uh, working and thus they do not uh, um, take much advantage of the uh, welfare provisions that are available to them. What we are looking at in this paper is the fiscal contribution of immigrants. We are not looking at the labor market, we are not looking at their possible impact on wages. We are not looking at their possible impact on innovation uh, or economic growth. That these are other aspects which we don't uh, touch uh, upon uh, in this particular study. Uh, and we hope we will uh, do that in, in future research.